this video today we talk about geography landforms class 7 social science landforms geography social science for class 7 <coughs> geography is study of earth landforms is study of the different aspects different forms different features of the lithosphere now we know earth is made up of different layers the crust the mantle the core etc the topmost portion of the earth is called lithosphere and then you have above that hydrosphere atmosphere and then the place where the animals and plants able to live together because of the presence of land water and air is called biosphere these things we study in science we study in geography we study in multiple ways because these are the factors that make life possible on earth and we do not know presence of life on any other planet Again, the landforms that we study on Earth are also somewhat similar or somewhat the mountains exist or the troughs exist or the valleys exist in other planets and satellites. But then the presence of water is not there. Likewise, the presence of ice is not there in every planet. Now, Earth has an infinite variety of landforms. We can classify them or categorize them or and use different parameters to put them in different buckets. But mostly we remember mountains or plains or valley when we talk about the landforms. The land, the form could be rugged or flat. Rugged means what? Whichever is not flat, we can say. Now, the landforms are a result of two processes. One is an endogenic, that is something that happens from within. Endogenic is inside. One is exogenic, some things that happens from outside, external. So, exo is external, endo is inside, endogenic is happening inside, exogenic is happening outside. Now, what is this happening outside? The happening outside is wearing down and rebuilding. Wearing down means pulling it down, breaking it down. Rebuilding is creating. Now, exogenic factors are the factors that happens outside, which results in wearing down and building down. How these happens? Maybe because of erosion, maybe denudation, maybe carrying and deposition, maybe sedimentation. Who is causing all this? Maybe air, maybe water, maybe glacier. Oh. So, if all these things are happening outside on the earth's surface, what is happening inside? On the inside, either upliftment can happen or sinking can happen. That is, a portion of the earth comes out or a portion of our earth goes inside, sinking or upliftment. These are caused by endogenic or internal forces. Why this happens? Because of the changes in the core, because of the changes in the mantle. Why changes in the core happens? Changes in the core happens because core is made up of hot, molten, liquid form of gas and materials and minerals inside the center of the earth. It is under very high temperature and very high pressure. So, very high temperature and very high pressure on the core acting on the molten magma that is the uh, liquid form of the materials of earth. What are the materials of earth? Could be metals, could be minerals, could be silica that is the soil could be gases, so many things are there inside the center of the earth. It is not sand everywhere from top to bottom. So, because of the temperature and pressure there and the gases get heated up, the endogenic forces or the forces that act in between cause upliftment or sinking of the earth. The exogenic forces are the water, um, river, river water or the wind or the glacier which cause erosion and denudation and in turn wearing down and rebuilding even ocean waves of the things that happen on the surface of the earth. Surface of the earth is the lithosphere. It could be acting on the mountain, it could be acting on the plain, it could be acting on the desert, it could be acting on the seas, it could be acting anywhere, the water, wind and ice. Now, what is gradation? Gradation is leveling. Leveling means what? There could be some hill lands or hills or highlands or plateaus where a lot of soil, sand, mud is available. And there could be areas where it is low lying, a valley type. So, it could so happen that the soil, sand, mud, silt, everything from the highland could get moved by way of erosion and sedimentation to lowlands for getting filled up by way of deposition. This is called gradation. Gradation is a leveling of the highlands through erosion and filling up of the lowlands through deposition. Deposition means what? Getting deposited. 
Erosion means what? Getting eroded. Eroded means what? If you are using dusks in your school, if it is a painted steel dusk, the paints will go away because of the use compass and pencil and other sharp objects on the top of your dusk. Now, if you are using wooden dusk, the wooden dusk, the top of the wooden dusk will not be same plain smooth on the end of the year, just like the way it was when you started the year, because some sort of erosion happens. Whatever things are soft will get eroded when something hard brushes against it. So, this erosion happens on the rocks also, though they are hard. By whom? By the water and wind, which we consider as soft agents. So, it is possible when water and air continuously, frequently, regularly over a period of time keep on hitting the rocks, the rocks will also get broken down. That is erosion. Deposition is the sand and silt will come and deposited. One very good example that everybody will know is you will find fine grains of um, sand on the deltas. If you go to Kanyakumari, where all the three um, seas, the Bay of Bengal, the Arabian Sea and Indian Ocean meet, you will find the soil there is very fine, very different. Why it happens? The rivers carry the sand and silt to the sea and sea brings it back in the form of waves by creating coastal plains on the shores. This is happening everywhere on the shore you will find very fine particles of sand. This is happening because of the deposition by the sea waves. Delta is formed by the deposition by the rivers. Moraines are formed by the deposition by the glaciers, whatever they bring. How they bring? They bring after erosion. How it gets eroded? When water continuously falls on the top of a uh, rocky surface, the rock becomes eroded. We will study about these in more details in the subsequent slides. What is weathering? Weathering is the breaking and falling apart. Breaking and falling apart of what? Of maybe rock or other rocky hard substances. Into what? Into small pieces of rocks. It becomes uh, small pieces of rock, then it becomes uh, stones, then it becomes silt and sand and soft soil particles. Weathering is breaking and falling apart of um, mountains or hills into small pieces of rocks or stone or silt or sand on the earth's surface. Weathering is breaking and falling apart. What is erosion? Erosion is wearing away of the landscape by different agents like water, wind, ice, sea, etc. Erosion is wearing away of the landscape. What is wearing away? If you want to look at the example of a sea waves causing erosion, now if a sea wave is there in a particular village, it is a coastal town or coastal village, after a few years because of the effect of the sea, the sea wave will take away sometimes the soil on the village and the village size will become smaller and the sea will come inside, the sea will grow bigger. This is erosion. So, this can happen on the river banks, this can happen anywhere. So, that is why we say water, wind, ice, sea, everything has a capability to erode, take away, wearing away. What is deposition? The eroded materials are carried by water, wind, etc. to another place and left there. Deposition is eroded materials are carried away by the wind, water, etc. and deposited at another place. So, endogenic, exogenic fetch, uh, processes, gradation, weathering, erosion, deposition, all this cause upliftment or sinking or rebuilding or wearing down. These are the reasons why the landforms on earth might keep changing over a period of time due to the forces that act upon it. Let us see how the river acts. What is river? River is water flowing from its source to the river mouth. Source is one important place. River mouth is another important place. And if the just water flows from source to mouth, is it okay? It should flow along a definite course. We should know where the river is. Now, definite course means for thousands of years, the river will have the same definite course? No. For a period of time, river may change its course for hundreds of reasons. When there is a flood, it will change a course. When there is no water, it will change a course. So, river course may change, but normally it will have a definite course. You will know Kaveri will flow from where to where. You will know Ganges where are the places where Ganges is flowing? You will know. So, that is why we say as a definite course. What is the source? Source is the place from where the water starts getting accumulated to become a river. What is a river mouth? River mouth is a place where the river goes and meets a lake or a sea or a uh, place where it ends, where it meets the ocean, where it deposits all the water. So, rivers normally originate from a mountain or a hill that is a high place, a high land or a 
place which is above the normal level. Now, it starts as a tributary, tributary or smaller rivers, streams, rivers originate from a mountain or a hill as tributary or streams and then all the tributaries and streams join together to form a mighty river. If you look at Ganga, Ganga has a lots of tributaries which come and bring water from all different places to make it such a big one of the longest river of India. Brahmaputra is also very long. But then Brahmaputra flows into multiple countries. Ganges flows only within India. And finally, the river joins a lake or a sea at a low land as a small distributary branches. The small streams that form the river at the beginning is called the tributary. The small streams that end as a river near the sea or a lake is called distributary. Distribution is dividing and giving into smaller pieces. That is distribution. Now, why this distributary is formed? Distributary is formed because the river is slow on a low land. There is a lot of silt. It is very heavy with the sediments that it is carrying. It doesn't have the force. So, it slowly goes. It doesn't create its own weight. It just gets spread out on the low-lying fertile plain wherever it is possible. So, all the lower trenches will become the distributaries of a river. And finally, it reaches the sea and stops there. That is how the distributaries form. How tributaries are formed? Not everywhere you have a pump set or a well pumping water. The water for the river is coming from the streams. The streams are formed because some small sources of water gush out from that places, maybe in the mountains and the hills. So, small, small tributaries form. Now, all these tributaries carry little, little water when they join together. Just like drop by drop is an ocean, they form a mighty river. Now, this river, the running water that is flowing from its source to the river mouth along a different course, this running water erodes the landscape. Landscape is what? The mountains, the hills, the plateaus, the plains, until it reaches the um, ocean or sea or a lake. Erodes the landscape. <clears throat> and this erosion causes a V-shaped valley. The valley created by a river is V-shaped. V means what? On the left hand side, on the right hand side, the mountains are cut by the river and then you have a V-shaped valley. Valley is a deep trench. Now, only when there are hills and rivers, you will have a valley. If there is no hill or if there is no river, there cannot be a valley. The most popular valley in the world is the Kashmir Valley. <coughs> Waterfalls. Waterfall is a falling body of a river. The river is there and the river is falling from the end of a mountain or a hill. It is called a waterfall. The river falling from the end of a mountain or a river is called a waterfall. Now, when it is falling, <coughs> it should be falling in a vertical way. If it is slowly coming in a slope, we don't call it as a waterfall. When it is falling on a vertical steep step, it is called a waterfall. Vertical steep step. Example is Kutralam Falls. For example, if you look in Tamil Nadu, Yog Falls in Bangalore is very popular. Now, world over, there are so many waterfalls. Waterfalls are important places of tourist attraction. Waterfalls have lots of benefits. A lot of people like and love and want to be somewhere near the waterfall for thousands of reasons. We will see that later. Angel Falls in Venezuela is the top best waterfall, the highest waterfall. Angel Falls in Venezuela. Where is Venezuela? In South America. In North America, on the US-Canada border, you have a Niagara Falls. And Victoria Falls is on the borders of Zambia, Zimbabwe, on Africa. So, in movies and all, you would have seen the dance sequences are shot near Niagara Falls or Victoria Falls and all. These are um, falls that give motivation to a lot of literature. People sing or people write about all these things because it is so beautiful a creation by nature. Now, <clears throat> these waterfalls are formed when soft rocks below are removed by erosion. Soft rocks below are removed by erosion. So, the water is falling from in the form of a vertical steep step. When it is falling, it caves down and when it caves down, it creates a bulge and when it creates a bulge, the softer rocks below is eroded and then the harder rock on the top remains. After some time, the overhang, the harder rock above also gets broken and the waterfall recedes a little bit back and the waterfall moves a little bit towards the river away from the new river after the falling. So, this is how waterfall is formed. So, the plunge pool is formed. What is plunge pool? Plunge pool is a hollow feature at the base of the waterfall because the water plunges from the top to the bottom. A pool created there because of the uh, uh, hollow feature at the base of the waterfall. Hollow means what? It is not very deep. Plunge means what? Because of the falling down of the water into the water. And pool is a small, not a lake, not a um, pond, smaller than that. 
plunge pool is a hollow fissure at the base of the waterfall. Why it is created? It is created by way of cavitation. What is cavitation? Creation of a cavity. What do you cavity? When you eat lot of chocolates, you will get cavity in your teeth. That means what? Some portion internal of the teeth goes away, gets eroded, but some other portion around it remains. The softer portion gets eroded, the harder portion remains for some time. Over a course of time, even the harder portion gets. The cavity grows. So, this cavitation causes a plunge pool, a hollow feature at the base of the waterfall and this causes deeper gorges. Deeper gorges means what? Because of the plunge pool, there is a lot of water in the pool and then water falls on the pool. When the water falls from the waterfall on the pool, the water splashes. When it splashes, there is a force. So, regular continuous splashing of the water from the plunge pool on the cavity onto the other softer rock on the sides will create further erosion. And then the soft rocks will go and it will soft rocks will retreat. Then what will happen? This water will start splashing on or falling on the harder rock on the top. That is called the overhang. Overhang is a harder rock on the top. The softer rock on the bottom has already got eroded and cavitation has happened. And that cavity or a small cave is called the gorges. The small tear or a small cave that happens on the soft rock is called gorges. This go the water that falls on the plunge pool will force the overhang to collapse over a period of time and then what will happen? The waterfall will retreat. Retreat means what? Go back. Upstream means what? Towards the place from where the water came. Downstream is towards the delta, towards the river mouth. Upstream is towards the source. So, the waterfall retreat towards the source. Does it mean it will go 100 kilometer? No. It goes a few millimeters every year and then after a few years when you go and see you will find the waterfall had receded a little bit onto the hard rock. This is the feature of effect of river on the landforms. The plunge pool which is a hollow feature at the base of the waterfall which is created by the cavitation causes deeper gorges which will force the overhang the harder rock on the top to collapse and the waterfall will retreat. This is one effect. Then we have an alluvial fan. Alluvial fan means what? Alluvial soil or spread out like a fan. Fan means what? Spread out. Just like a shape of a fan or a hand fan or a machine fan. It will be spread out. Why what is formed? It is formed by deposition. Deposition is what? Deposition is depositing. Process of getting deposited. Of what? Sediment. What is sediment? Sand, soil, silt, etc. From where? From the mountains the rivers are coming from. To where? To the foothills or the plains. So, alluvial pan is deposition of sediments by the river on the foothills and plains. Then river also forms meanders. Meanders is what? Large bends. It starts with a, we can say a U shape, large bend of the river because the river twists and turns and twirls when it is coming on the flat surface, on the plains. Why? There is no reason for the river to fall fast. Why? Nearer the tributaries, nearer the hills, it gets lot of water sources. The river is getting bigger and bigger. It will be coming very fast. But rivers on the plains do not run fast. The water on the river on the plains runs slowly. Because the land is flat, because it carries a lot of sediment and silt, it runs slowly. And when it is running slowly, it creates a lot of twist, turns and twirls. That is called the meanders. Because it bends here and there, it creates meanders, the bends. These bends are very large. Now, if you have seen the Vellar in Kadalur, it has lots of meanders. Vellar in Kadalur has a lots of meanders. Now, which um, uh, why the word meander is given? The word meander is given to these bends created by the river because there is a river in Turkey. <coughs> that Turkey has a um, river called meander. Country called Turkey has a river called meander. It has lots of bends like this. So, the formation of water body in the form of a bend created by a river is named after those bends as meander. Now, what happens? The ends of the meander loop come closer. When, when a river creates a meander, the ends of the meander loop comes closer. This coming closer is happening because of the the coming closer is happening because of what? Because of the depositing of a sediments and silt. So, we were talking about meanders. Now, these are the meanders. These meanders, the soil gets deposited over here. Now, the soil that comes in gets deposited. So, this is the outside bend of the river cliff. This is the meander neck. 
So this neck comes closer and closer and in case of a flood water straight away goes without going into the middle it is getting cut off. When it is cut off it forms a oxbow lake. Now the, on the outer side whatever happens the soil deposition this is called lateral erosion because it becomes bigger and bigger this is lateral erosion. The yellow color what you see inside the insides whatever is happening is a deposition. So erosion happens on the outside deposition happens on the inside. Because of the erosion here the sand goes away and water comes closer. Because of the deposition here whatever happens is the river keeps, gets pushed inside because of the yellow color deposition. Finally because of the deposit here it cuts through and creates a meander lake. And likewise as we saw in the waterfalls this is the overhang the plunge pool is created because of the cavitation. This cavitation water rushes or splashes and creates a gorges. Because this gorges keeps on growing, the hard rock is heavy, soft rock is not here. So this gets broken down here and then the overhang breaks down and waterfall will start from here instead of starting from here. This is how the waterfall is happening. So this is a plunge pool and meanders. Now flooding of the neighboring areas overflows at banks and deposit layers of fine soil. Flooding of the neighboring areas, which means what? The river brings flood. When the river floods, what happens is it is flooded. The silt is deposited here. River silt is deposited here. The green color was a normal area of the land around the river, and during the flood, the silt is deposited. This area becomes higher during flood. When there is no flood in the normal flow, the silt is deposited at the bottom of the river, and so this level goes up. As this level goes up, as you know, when the water level in the bottom goes up, water level on the top also has to go up if it is regular supply of normal amount of water. This river water, if it goes up, it should ideally flood the plains because it is above the level of green, but does not flood because of the levees or the sand and silt deposited during the flood on the shores, on the sides of the river, on the banks of the river. So after a few years, maybe after 100 years, the river would have been actually flowing at a level higher than what it was. Earlier it was flowing at, flowing at level, now it is flowing at this level. But though this is flowing at a higher level, there is no damage caused in the form of flood because of the levees. This is called the levee, L-E-V-E-E, -E -E, levee, the sand and silt deposited. So the flooding of the neighboring areas when the river overflows at the blank in case of a flood deposits layers of fine soil raising the levee on the flood plain. The levee is created on the flood plain on the banks of the river. Now what is delta? Delta is collection of sediment from all mouth of distributary and meanders. Delta is collection of sediment. All this um, violet blue brown color that you see is the delta. The delta is collection of sand and sediment from all the distributaries near the mouth of the river is the fine silt fertile sand near the mouth of the river. Now what is speciality of the delta? Not only it is beautiful, it is very rich and very, very, very rich in nutrients, in minerals. It is very good for cultivation. That is why Kaveri delta has been the home of Dravidian civilization for a long time. The Chola period was able to flourish because of the facilities available at the Kaveri Delta. Kaveri Delta is the rice bowl of South India. So this is the Delta. So we have studied about meanders, the levees, the Delta and how oxbow lakes are formed. How oxbow lakes are formed. Now glaciers. Glaciers are large bodies of ice moving slowly down the slope or valley due to gravity. It is not water but body of ice. Continental glacier covers vast area of the continent. For example, Antarctica, Greenland, etc. That means what? The whole continent we can say is made up of a glacier. There is no land. It is only sheet of ice we can say. Now, there is something called a mountain or a valley glacier. That is what? This is a stream of ice that flows from a mountain. Stream of ice means what? Just like a river. It's a river of ice or a stream of ice that flows from a mountain and slowly it flows on the valley. And when a river flows on a valley, it forms a V-shaped valley. But when a glacier flows, it creates a U-shaped valley. Glaciers create a U-shaped valley. Now, the glaciers normally follow coals of an earlier river because they are sheets of ice, like um, they are like rocks of ice. So, moving rocks of ice is not very easy. It's not as easy to flow just like a river. So, normally they follow the coals of a former river. So, the path is 
made a little easy for these blocks of ice, rocks of ice to flow. They are bounded by steep sides. The sides of the glacier river are very steep. These mountain glaciers are found in Himalayas or in the Alps. Now, there is something called cirque, C -I -R -Q -A, cirque. Cirque is glacially eroded rock basin. Rock basin means what? Just like a river basin is the place where the river has eroded because of its flow, the rocks are eroded by the glacier that flows on the top of the rock. Such an eroded rock basin is called cirque. Eroded by whom? Eroded by the glaciers. They have steep side walls. The walls are steep side. They have a steep head wall. And it will look like an armchair. It will have an armchair shape because of the steep sides and steep ends and the steep head wall. And they have a depression. Example, the quarry in Scotland or the car in Germany. Cirque. Cirque is uh, armchair shaped depression caused by the erosion on the rock basin resulting in a steep side wall and steep head wall. Cirque is a armchair shaped depression caused by erosion by the glacier of the rock basin with a steep side wall and a steep head wall. Right? Okay, then what is a tarn lake? As the ice melts, they get filled up on the cirque. When the ice melts, this cirque, cirque is water, depression, armchair shaped depression. This depression gets filled up with water. Water from where? Water from the ice that melts from the glacier. This is called a Tarn Lake. Tarn Lake is created by Oxbow Lake is created by river meander. Tarn Lake is created by glacier as the water melts into the armchair shaped depression on the cirque. What is Aret? Aret is adjacent cirques erode towards each other in a narrow rocky steep ridge. Aret is an adjacent cirques. Cirque is a <coughs> Depression. Adjacent cirques erode towards each other in a narrow rocky steep ridge is an aret. There are places where you have lots of alerts. You will find it in the glacier filled region. U shaped valley is formed by the glaciers and they are found beneath the glacier. Valley is found beneath the glacier. Why? Because it is fully covered by ice and it is deepened and widened by the lateral and vertical erosion. Deepen means what? Go deep by the vertical erosion. Widened means on the sideways. It grows sideways. Wide. It becomes wider by lateral erosion. Now, this is what we study about the sea waves. What is happening in the sea waves is, the sea waves will create a cave-like formation and then on the, till the end everything is broken, only the roof and walls will remain and finally the roof will also go off and only the walls will remain. That is what happens when the sea wave suffix on the land. So, we have seen glacier, tarn lake and moraines and things like that how the wind blows and affects, let us see. Now, wind is an agent of deposition and erosion. Wind is an agent of deposition and erosion. When the wind blows, this is a glacial moraine. This is a glacial moraine. What is moraine? Moraine is the um, delta equivalent of or the floodplain equivalent of or the levy equivalent of a river. That means what? The salt, the um, sediment, the soil, the fertile um, sediments that the glacier brings will be deposited in a place called a moraine. Right? Okay. Now, when the wind blows on a mountain, it blows at a higher speed at lower levels and lower speed on the higher levels. And because of the high speed, it erodes more on the lower levels. Because the erosion is more, the rock pieces are cut away more and the erosion is less on the higher level. So, it is not so much eroded. So, the erosion and denudation happens on the middle lower, lower level, not on the high level. And so, it gives rise to something called a mushroom shake figure. This is called a mushroom rock. Okay. So, a wind is an important agent of erosion and deposition. Wind is the most important agent in the deserts. Mushroom rocks are formed when ends erode the lower section of the rock more than the upper part. And so, rocks have a narrow base and wider top. Narrow base and wider top. More erosion on the top and less erosion on the bottom. This is a mushroom rock. What is Inselberg? Isolated residual hill standing like a pillar with rounded tops. Isolated hill standing like a pillar with rounded top is Inselberg. Then you have sand dunes. Wind blows, lifts and transport sand from one place and depositing like a hill on another place. These are sand dunes. These are sand dunes. Now the speciality of sand dunes is that there are different shaped sand dunes. Some are crescent shaped etc. Now, 
The wind also causes not only sand dunes, it causes loess and burchens. What is burchens? Burchens is crescent shaped sand dunes. Sand dunes is hill like structure of sand. This hill like structure of sand is a sand dunes. Now, wind is so powerful an agent, it has capability to move the whole sand dune shaped group of amount of large quantity of sand from one place to another. It will appear like when the winds are blowing very fast, it will appear like the whole hill is moving. So, the sand on the desert is moved, eroded and carried and deposited at another place and it is um, deposited in such a fashion, it will look hill-like. So, it is called sand dune. If the hill is of a crescent shape, it is have a different special name called burchens. It has a special name. Now, what is loess? Loess is again, sand is carried and deposited in another place, but it is not in the form of a, not in the form of a uh, hill, but in the form of a equally spread out fine grains over a large area. Very fine grains deposited, spilling went for a toss, deposit, deposited over a wide area. Very fine grains of sand deposited over a very fine area. Deposited over a very fine area. This is thing. So, what happens is when such fine grains of sand are deposited over a very fine area and when you look from a top, it gives beautiful shapes. It gives beautiful shapes or designs or patterns. So, very fine grain of sand deposited over a large area creating lot of patterns and shapes and designs is called loess. This is very popular in China. China means what Gobi Desert. Loess, L-O-E-S-S. So, loess, burchens, sand dunes, inselberg, mushroom rocks, all these are caused by the wind. We have the effect of sea waves also on the landforms. Sea waves is the waves of the sea, the water plus air together is the one that causes a sea wave. It comes with a very great speed. If you go to Kanyakumari, you will not find the waves are very harsh. If you go to Chennai Marina Bridge, you will find the waves are reasonably harsh. If you go to, um, um, for example, Rameshwaram, there you will find the waves are harsher than Marina because the beach is not having a slope, beach is little bit steeper. So, different seas in different areas have different um, sea waves because of the landform there, the wind over there, whether they are which side of the peninsula they are and things like that. So, what happens is, sea cliffs. Sea cliffs are caused because of the erosion by the sea waves forming strong, steep rock face. Strong, steep rock face. These are sea cliffs are formed because of the erosion that happens on the rock. Right? What is happening is, the sea will fall and this whole area is now gone away. It is becoming very steep. Earlier, this rock was not that steep, but because of the effect of the sea waves, this has, this has got eroded and this has become stiff. That is what we say as a effect of sea cliffs on these sea waves. Now, what is sea caves? Sea caves are this formation. The water hits and softer portion of these rocks are going away. Sea caves are large, wide crack forming caves formed by continuous strike of waves on the rocks. Continuous strike of waves on the rocks creating a cave by breaking about the softer portion of the rock because first it cracks then it breaks. What are sea arches? When only roof of the walls of the sea cave remains, when only roof and walls of the cave remains and then the rest of the portion is eaten away by the sea. right? And then sea arches, we have seen roof and walls. Stacks. Further erosion on the sea arch leaves behind only walls. Only these walls are there and this middle is not there. When this middle is not there and the only walls are there and the roof is not there, roof falls down. It is a stack. Erosion of the sea arch leaves behind only walls. Arches, only wall and roof. When roof also goes, only stacks will remain because only walls are remaining. What is a beach? Beach is waves, deposits, sediments of sand and gravel along the shores. Marina Beach is world famous because it is one of the best beaches in the world. Waves, deposits, sediments of sand and gravel along the shores. What is a sandbar? Elongated deposition of sea or sand or mud parallel to the coast. When sand is deposited on the shore, along the shore, it is a beach. 
but sand is deposited on a sea itself causing a sea mud or a sea strand that means what there is a small land area created on an elongated position along the beach along the seashore parallel to the coast it is a sand bar a raised area having sand all around will be a water it will be parallel to the coast and it is because of the deposition of the um, soil and silt by the sea waves it is called sand mud sea sand mud so this is a sand bar is it an island it is not big enough to be called an island islands are normally naturally formed and these are deposition of the sea now what happens to the sand bar is this may undergo changes in the shape or size in case something like tsunami happens this will go away also this is a sand bar what is a lagoon lagoon is a shallow stretch of water separated from the sea shallow stretch of water separated by the sea means what just like this meander happens the sea water comes into the land and then does not go back but forms a small lake so shallow stretch of water partially or completely separated from the sea it has no connection to the sea mostly it will have a small connection or no connection so lagoon is a shallow stretch of water partially or completely separated from the sea chilka lake in odisha pulikat lake in tamil nadu and all the water is sea water the water came from the sea and in case of a flooding the sea and this will meet each other but it is a shallow stretch which is separated from the sea a sea inside the land connected to the sea outside is a lagoon what is backwater it is a lagoon type only for example vembanad lake is a um, very large lake in kerala it can be considered as backwater it can be considered as a lagoon because it is so large it has a features of both a backwater and lagoon but when the but normal backwater is just like a river but in a river the water flows from the highland towards the sea in a backwater the river does not actually flow but remains static but the water of the sea has come in land in the form of a river or a shape of a river the water does not normally flow but stays like as in the sea as it is that is a backwater so these are the different things that we have seen we have looked at the landforms for geography class 7 Thanks for watching this video. We will meet again for discussing other chapters on history, geography, and civics.